Yes, yes, hello. So, um, I'm very quickly, bearing in mind the exams on Friday, going to go through um, some more paper free answers. So, you will get your paper free exam, and it will be based, the first question will be based on your pre release material. I'm not going to talk about pre release, but hopefully, you'll see some similarities between each paper as we go through. So, fill the front in as usual. You, you know, you might want to. I don't think you need to put as much on the front as you would with your uh, other exams, but again, I reckon it's definitely worth putting a compass on the front. Uh, SECO, Social Economic Challenge Opportunity. If it's going to ask you to explain, this means that. If it's going to ask you to make a decision, so evaluate, assess, agree to some extent. There might be a graph question, GCSEA. General comment, specific example, um, anomaly. Um, but yeah, but th this is often called the skills paper because there's a lot of skills in it. Now, the first questions, this is going to be about a pre release. Now, we, we're not looked at this pre release, it was about energy in the United Kingdom. Okay, and the first two questions are always going to be uh, about the pre release. Question three gets a bit bigger, that's going to be a six marker. And then finally, the second half of question three is going to be the 12 marker. And if you watch our other video for 2023, you'll probably see a great example of that answer. Please excuse the people shouting in the corridor. They're just having a laugh out there. Right, so section B field work. This is what we're going to look at in this video. All right. Now, the first one is unfamiliar field work. So this is not field work you've done. It's field work you could have done but it's data that other students have done. So let's have a look. It says, study figure four, which shows the results of a survey carried out with visitors in Windermere in the Lake District. 100 people were interviewed. Straight away, you've got to think, right, if we're interviewing people, all right, these results are going to be based uh, a lot on their opinions. Okay, but anyway, what's the first question you want us to do? Complete the map below to show the origin of visitors to Windermere from South East. So the South East is down here. It tells you on the map there. And the South East, we've got 18%. So you should colour that in. Like that now. As long as you colour it in fairly dark, and it's obvious it's not the other two, you will get the marks. You could, if you wanted to be double safe, you could put an arrow there, but I don't think you need to. And the second one, uh, Wales is 2%. Just double checking, it tells you up here actually. Just make sure you put your lines far apart. Because if you put them close together, you're going to be representing 9 to 16%. Okay, so that's a nice two easy marks for colouring in a map. If you see that map, all right, and you just flip onto the next page, you've lost two marks. They're not going to put things in there just to fill the paper up. Everything's got a reason. Okay. Suggest one reason why each of the following questions might be useful for an inquiry about visitors to Windermere. Now, where have you come from? Now, if this was international, you could maybe consider talking about like language boards, saying welcome and directing people to places. But the one I would use is, I'd write to determine sphere of influence. And that's a posh way of saying how big of an area does Windermere attract people. So if I draw there, that would be a small sphere of influence, whereas that would be a big sphere of influence. Why are you visiting Windermere? Um, for why are you visiting Windermere, it could be, I don't know, maybe people are visiting to go boating. It will direct investment to appropriate facilities all 
okay or it will show what facilities what how do you spell what what facilities are required so as i said if everyone says i come to go on the boats well they might need more boats two more marks right next study figure five Two sets of data collected by students who were carrying out a geographical inquiry about problems in a town centre. Now, it says car ownership in the town. So as time's going on, that's quite like straightforward, isn't it? As we go through the decades, the 10 years, more people own cars. Hey, people travel to the town centre out of 100 people. Well, straight away I'm thinking pie chart maybe. Most people use car. The following four methods were considered for presenting the data shown in figure five. Which method, A, B or C or D, A, B, C or D, would be most suitable for presenting each set of data? Now the car ownership, I would go with a line graph. So your car ownership, it would go something up like that and for this one straight away 100 people it makes sense to use a pie chart because pie charts are out of 100 percent so that would very quickly show the data so we're looking at the most appropriate presentation methods yes yes let's have a look at this one so question 4.4 4. study figure 6 which shows the results of a car park survey Okay, so we've got the town centre and we've got the main shopping area. And these are the car parks. Okay, and what it's showing you is how full they are at different times of the week. So Wednesday afternoon, 2pm, versus Saturday at 11am. Now, I just straight away I'm thinking, well, the Wednesday afternoon, you, you might have people who are actually working there who are parked up for the day, but... At the weekend, Saturday 11 a.m., you're going to have prime time shoppers, aren't you? Because that's when most people are off work to do their shopping. So it says, suggest reasons for differences shown in the car park survey between Wednesday and Saturday. Okay, so I'm going to think the first one. So in the week, Wednesday, is it 2 p.m.? 2 p.m., comma, you will have fewer people shopping as most people are at work now we need to use some data for example we'll use car park A versus B nice 20% difference for example comma car park A how close is it which is right next to the town centre that is close to the town centre shopping area is 20% more full that's not the best sentence but it'll be alright more full on Saturday okay Most people do their shopping at the weekend. So we've, we've suggested, you know, most people at work in the week. We've said that this car park is close to the town. It's 20% more full. So I'm suggesting reasons. Most people do shopping at the weekend. The car parks are probably full 
of cars belonging to staff during the week. Hence, or this means that something along that line, hence they are still fairly full. Final model, well, what happens at the weekend? Maybe there's a football match or maybe there's a, a I don't know, some kind of carnival in the city. Finally, there may be an event at the weekend. In brackets, e.g. football match. Uh, meaning fuller car parks. Okay. Uh, you're going to get three or four marks. For that I'd say four marks. Remember, you're suggesting reasons. Just imagine what what a town centre is like. All right. Put yourself in the position. If you're really struggling, draw a picture of yourself. Here's me. Look. Hmm. What's going on there? Okay. Okay. Study seven. Data collected by means of questionnaire about the employment structure of the of a town. So we've got few in primary, twenty five percent secondary, seventy percent tertiary. Complete the divided bar graph by plotting the data. A lot of kids lose a mark here because they don't do both bars. So we've got primary already done. Secondary go up to 30 because 25 plus 5 is 30. Secondary. Some kids might go to 25% as well. But you've already got 5. 5 plus 25 is 30. And then all that's left is tertiary and that's the trick of doing that all right some people might do tertiary first and go up to 70 percent well 70 minus the five primaries only 65 uh suggest one other method that could be used to present the employment structure data well it's percentage i would go pie chart for your mark okay Data questions. Study figure eight, data collected for a river inquiry. Complete the following table using the stream flow data in figure eight. So median, right, to get the median, you've got to put them all in order. So I would go about doing it like that. What's the lowest number? Three, how many threes? So three, cross, three, cross. Then next, how many fours? One, two, Three, four, 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 four. One, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three. Six, two, sixes. We've got one, seven, and one, nine. Okay. Now, median, we go get rid of one from each side. 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 One mark. Five. The mode is the most common. So I've scribbled through them, but the most common, there was four fours. So the answer is four. Mode or common, most common. Um, the next question. Suggest two pieces of advice that should be given to students in order to reduce the potential risk when carrying out physical geography. Okay, easy peasy. All right. Uh, where appropriate footwear to reduce slips and injuries. If you're walking up a river valley and you've got high heels on, you may as well call 999 before you get out the coach. Um, weather, uh, be aware of adverse weather. 
AJ where sun tan lotion or wear a waterproof coat other things I don't know uh, have a first aid kit available just in case you get hurt just common sense now when we get to question five this is not unfamiliar this is your field work now these titles here you don't need to spend forever writing them because you don't get a mark of that but as as someone who's marked the exam papers or oh, i haven't actually marked them uh our main man mr bato has he said and we spoke to the exam board this gives them an indication of what you're going to write down here so if that's better you know the time it takes to write out a simple sentence there is going to make a difference so human field work our example is does tourism have a negative environmental impact at carding male valley all right now if you remember carding mill valley has got i'll destroy i'll do it down the bottom here i know it's got all the waterfalls and river valleys but it's got a visitor center all right where loads of people hang around to go for a wee to have a sandwich to buy an ice cream whatever it's a meeting spot we were saying that the area here is going to have more environmental impact because people are making noise dropping litter etc than the areas further away this would have less environmental impact or at least that's the theory so why this was suitable for um a geographical inquiry well the, the total it is clearly <laughs> geographical it's a geography question and environmental impact of tourism are a serious issue if you don't believe me look at the pre-release 2023 it's talking about building a port for more tourists but the moment about the environmental issue such as turtles becoming an extinct also uh, it was safe to collect a range of meaningful data that would demonstrate change over distance you could you could have talked about the fact that well the cardi mill valley is maintained by the national trust um it was easily accessible by coach the footpaths are maintained but yeah okay next question Justify one primary data collection method used in your human geography inquiry. Now, look, I'm going to have a quick look at the mark scheme here because it's free marks. It says one method with detailed justification equals three marks. Some justification in relation to aims of investigation, two marks. Statements with an element of implied element of justification equals one mark. So, Primary is data you collected yourself. So we used environmental surveys. If it was secondary, we'd be looking at photographs, historic maps, other people's studies. Data collection method used for your human geography inquiry. This is the command word here. So I'm not just what you did, why you did it. So I would say we completed environmental surveys. at the visitor center comma and at 200 meter intervals north south east 
and west. Okay, this is systematic sampling. But remember, why have we done it? Justify. We did this because it was simple and safe comma it could be completed quickly with out complex technology and I think this is my new favorite phrase and the data points would show or would demonstrate change over distance okay but if you just say what your data collection method is you're probably going to get one mark okie doke State the title of your fieldwork inquiry in which physical geography data were collected. Title of inquiry. So, we're doing the physical geography. Does river channel cross profile? If you don't know what that means, width and depth. Increase with distance from the source so let me just show you here quickly what we're saying is at the source or at the start of the river further up there was a waterfall there the river is going to be shallow and narrow Whereas, down here, it's going to be deeper and wider. Now, in reality, we only, we only went down about two, three kilometres, so you're not going to see much difference. But that's the theory we're testing. Okay, that's the aim of it. And that is what the Bradshaw model suggests. Wider, deeper. Anyway. To what extent were the data collected useful in satisfying the original aims of the inquiry? All right, so I would start off TSA to some extent, comma, the data were useful in satisfying. the original aims of the inquiry okay that's the aims of the inquiry so to measure width comma we used two ranging poles placed on either side of river channel and then pulled a measuring tape taut which means tight across the channel Okay, now, we've said what we did. How did that it meet the aims? This is where you get the marks, and this is where kids, and I think some teachers don't, don't follow through here. We've got to say, this means that we had accurate river width data from 
three sides downstream that showed us that the river channel did increase in width due to lateral erosion. Uh -huh. Now, to what extent was it useful? You could talk about the problems here, just briefly. However, some students didn't pull the data taught pull the data taught the tape taught meaning less result cost bell accuracy that may not been useful in fulfilling our aims of the investigation. All right, the other thing we did, if you remember, is once we got the river channel, width, there we are, our ranging poles, we pulled a tape measure across, didn't we? We divided that distance by 10, and then we used a meter ruler at every 10th of the river to measure two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. May as well do 10. Every 10th to show us depth. So then what you would do is you would say, I'm running out of space, but to fulfill the other aim, which was depth, comma, we used systematic sampling. I'm going to start right now. River width divided by 10 and a meter ruler. to measure depth across channel. All right, did this help with the aims? Yes, it did. This helped meet the original aims as we were testing I'm going to come down here a bit. Uh, whether, could bring the Bradshaw model in, whether the Bradshaw model was correct and rivers did in fact get wider downstream. If you've got time, you could talk about the problems, you know, some kids might put it on a rock. We could have got better data by using a laser range finder, but good luck getting the school to pay for about two grand's worth of them. It's not appropriate. All right. Final one, another 12 marker. With reference to your method results and conclusions, suggest how one of your geographical inquiries could be improved. All right, this is a nice question. It doesn't confuse matters by saying the original aims of the thing. Um, now, I've already talked about rivers quite a lot, so I'm going to do this on the human geography, but you could do it on the rivers, basically what we've just said in the last answer to an extent. So, um, title, so I'm going to put human, environmental, 
impact tourism at Cardin Mill Valley. Okay. Now, whenever you see these free linked method results conclusions, I've done this with you loads of times, but you could do it. You could do it at the side. Remember. It goes in a flow chart methods to results to conclusions. Now, if your methods are rubbish, your results are being accurate. If you're basing your conclusions on inaccurate results well they're not going to be very trustworthy so that's the kind of language we need to be using so conclusions validity of conclusions is based upon accuracy of results So, keywords. Accuracy of results is based upon valid. No, accuracy is based upon the reliability of methods. So, if your methods are unreliable, your accuracy of results is going to be lower. And that's what we do. So if we want to improve our results, we make the methods more accurate. If we want to improve our conclusions, we have to make the results more accurate. We need the methods more reliable. All right? So reliability, accuracy, trustworthiness, validity. So, time is it? Right, I'm going to smash his head. Ten minutes. Um... I believe my conclusions were valid to some extent, comma. However, due to inaccuracies caused right inaccuracies in results caused by unreliable methods put a semicolon they could have been improved so what you've done there is you've showed the examiner you understand this kind of cycle, this flow chart. Right, we're going to set the scene a little bit. So, Carding, Mel Valley is a popular uh, tourist attraction in Shropshire or Church, Stretch Church Stretton in Shropshire and has a popular visitor centre. You can remember the Butler model talks about how tourism impacts an area, so you could bring that in. The Butler model suggests that tourism has a negative or a potentially negative impact on the environment. So, we used systematic sampling to complete environmental surveys at the
the visitor center and north south east and west of the visitor center per 200 meters now that's a bit overkill because we're setting the scene but we're setting it to a grade nine i think so the the, the examiner should yeah i'll get what's going on here now what were the problems right first of all uh let's talk about the actual data collection one problem with the method reliability was when we tried to collect data east and west of the VC where you put visitor center here put VC in brackets so you have to keep writing it here center of the VC due to unsafe terrain steep hills whatever you want to say full stop this led to inaccurate results and invalid conclusions now this is it wants you to improve it okay suggest that we could improve it this is where you're getting the marks to be honest to improve comma we could have used secondary data e.g. online photographs or you know I love drones or drone footage to take images of the environments we couldn't access All right, let's bank the marks. This would have improved accuracy of results and validity of conclusions. So we've done what the question asked, haven't we? We've gone a long way around it, but remember we want to properly set the scene. What else could we do? Well, subjectiveness. Oh, I'm the, the, it was 0 to 10, wasn't it? Another issue was the surveys we created. The scores were between 0 and 10. This led to confusion. For example, comma, when assessing, so that's what we did is we assess the environment. When assessing noise, comma, students didn't know whether Ten was good or bad. This means that the unreliable methods led to inaccurate results. and
unvalid conclusions. Now this is where I'm getting the marks. To improve, comma, we could have used a positive negative scale sometimes called the bipolar chart like this and draw it zero plus one plus two plus three minus one minus two minus three bad good now getting away from what that's showing uh, in addition we could have used a noise meter, some of that measures noise, to really measure the noise accurately. All right, All right we've got a bit more space. Finally, comma, results from environmental surveys are based on opinions and are subjective. To improve, we could have used secondary data such as previous studies and or collected more primary data such as field sketching or taking photographs. Now remember, that if I'm going to say this once, I'll say it ten times. The key thing about this question is do what it tells you to do. You could have got decent amount of marks writing less than this by just doing this. Remember, I'm setting the scene. I'm trying to help you revise at the same time. But what it wants to say is... How could you improve these? You could say, the surveys were not very good. We didn't understand the scales. To improve this, we could have used a bipolar scale that looks like that. All right? You could have said, um, the results were subjective. This means that it was based on opinion. To improve the results, we could have uh, taken photographs and we could have assessed them back in the classroom. All right? So there you go. Respect.